How's it going guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, if you missed yesterday's video, please just stop what you're doing, go back and watch yesterday's video where I show you that I've got my dream wheels. So just pause the video, go back and then watch that and then come back to this. It will all make sense. Okay, first things first, I apologize for this weird angle and the overexposed video. I'm so sorry, but it'll, it'll all make sense in just a moment. But in today's video, we're actually gonna go on an adventure. So we're gonna leave the Isle of Wight and we're gonna go about an hour north and we're gonna pick up something for the truck. Like I said in yesterday's video, this is gonna be the start of like a new era, a new chapter for the truck if I may. And of course, it's just occurred to me now that you probably would have seen the thumbnail and the title of this video. So the surprise is sort of semi there. Most of you know, I've wanted to get a gem top for this truck for such a long time. I really, really, really want one. I love the fact that it's just in line with the roof of the truck, the decals of the gem top, the, the fact that it was made specifically for this truck most of you know that now that i've wanted one for such a long time now the search for a gem top does continue despite today's video okay so bear that in mind i am still on the hunt for a gem top trust me a couple of days ago i actually took the truck on the ferry and i actually had a signature lounge card um, which i could use to get on the signature lounge pointless it was just a waste of space. I, most of you know now that I absolutely despise the Red Funnel, the money-stealing bastards that they are. It's ridiculous. Nonetheless, we got off and we headed to this place. So I found this guy on Facebook Marketplace. He has got like many, many pickups. I was just in awe. Most of them were Fords and Escorts and Datsuns. It, it was just amazing to see all these classic vehicles very very cool nonetheless i was there for one thing and one thing only after searching on facebook marketplace for many many hours uh, i found this guy selling this topper which has windows all the way around and it's sort of in line with the roof but it's not it kind of goes along and then up it's quite strange looking it kind of looks like something that you see like cars with disabled like wheelchair access do you know what i'm saying the guy's got a south african backy pickup truck and it this camper shell came over to the uk on top of the backy pickup that he's got so bless the guy he fitted it onto the truck for me using like a rivet gun because you have to put these brackets in for it to be attached and bless him he took time out of his day got his tools out and he fitted it on for me and we both sort of like held it in position so I'm very thankful I know it's not a gem top it's just a temporary camper shell until I get a gem top I know I've got many many years left of my life where the search will continue and I will eventually get a gem top for this truck and it will be a match made in heaven but for now I've got this South African camper shell that was for a backy so again sort of made for the vehicle but from a different country it does what i need it to do now let me explain the reasoning for why i've got it now you guys have seen what the, the topper looks like i can reposition the camera bear in mind at the time of going to pick up this camper shell i've got the new ats pepper pots on but with the old tires the 175 70 tires so they are that like before i even put the topper on the back they are scraping like a bitch and the topper isn't that heavy but having that extra weight on the back it was constantly scraping the tires at the rear and all you could smell all the way home was burnt rubber it was ridiculous i got it home safely got back on the ferry and got home straight away messaged sean at yarmouth tires and said look dude 
we're gonna have to put these new tires on straight away because it's just the, the truck is scraping like a bitch so anyway sean then said come over and we'll fit the new tires for you scraping like a bitch So we've ordered some 175.50 and we're going to put the old ones back on the old steelies and the new tyres on the new wheels. Put these on and let's have a look at the difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's mad isn't it <laughs> such a difference 20 mil can make so the new tires are on the truck it's not scraping at all which is absolutely amazing most of you now know that the whole thing with me and this truck is that I want it to be really functional. I don't really care so much for looks. That's just a bonus. The only thing is, is because we've got the PD-130 lump in the front, now the 1.9 TDI engines are fairly tall as they are. Now I've got 13 inch wheels with 17550 tires which has lowered the truck quite considerably. We've already got the three inch drop plates and we've got adjustable coilovers in the front. Now with these new wheels and the new tires, I was thinking I could lower the truck even more, but after close consideration, I had a look underneath and the sump is like three fingers from smashing the ground. So it looks like I won't be able to lower the truck right now for the safety reasons. Maybe one day in the future, we'll get something like Air Ride or whatever, I don't know. But anyway, side note, I should say, I actually swapped out the original oil sump on the PD for a shallow sump, which you probably would have seen in the engine swap uh, series that we did here. I did the shallow sump myself and did the whole gasket thing, everything, yada, yada, yada. So it's got a shallow sump on and it's still ridiculously low to the ground. Anyway, we made it back. We've got a nude camper shell. We've got the new wheels with the brand new tires on. I'm happy. We're not scraping. Now, the reason why I've got the camper shell in the first place is because we go camping quite a lot for caddy campers and et cetera, et cetera. And I was just getting sick and tired of getting that massive tent out, which is broken, by the way. The zips are broken. It just doesn't. Anyway, it just takes a while to unpack it and then pack it back up when you leave. I was just getting absolutely sick to death of it. And I just was looking at everybody else that, you know, sleeps in the back of their truck. And I was like, that's the way forward. We've got the camper shell, immediately put an airbed in there. So looking forward to going camping for the first time in the back. It's super cozy. We've already been out in it for like a picnic during the day. Absolutely phenomenal. Now, I know it's not the prettiest camper shell in the world. It does look a little bit ugly. Nonetheless, like I said, this is just temporary whilst I still look for a gem top. I started to stick up on the back. I think I'm only just going to do this side because it doesn't really matter as it's a left-hand drive. If I had it my way, I would basically get rid of this window and extend this one all the way out to about here. And this, I don't like this at all. And I don't like the fact that it sort of gradually goes up, but never mind. It's got one little strut there missing on that side. I think I might try and replace these struts anyway, because I want the lid to open up a little bit higher because I've smashed my head so many times on this. But yeah. Got a little bit of a leak as well, which I need to fix. So I ordered eight of these foam square pieces that you'd normally find at like a child's playpen. And it works wonders as like a little ground sheet. And then you put your 
your air mattress on top and it's super, super cozy. Chloe helped me out cutting this down and measuring it to size and we've got a nice little foam piece and then we put the air bed on top. We've also got some windows at the back. Pretty cool. So what's left to do is I've got some blackout material which is gonna go over all the windows and they're gonna be held on with some really strong magnets. Because if you put like some, if you put double-sided Velcro, when it does get condensation-y, that stuff will peel off. So I thought magnets would be such a good idea. Then I'll make it super cozy at night. The other thing I might do is try and get like a hook or two so I can hang up like a lantern at night. And you've got so much space left for all your camping stuff like food, cooker, like cool box, etc., and clothing, and so many other things. And then if, when it comes to going to bed, you got your air bed here, you just quickly blow up and put everything in the front. Proper happy with this little purchase. And like I said, it is only temporary, but I think it makes the truck look so much different to before. I still drive the truck every single day. I still take it to the tip. I can still use it for that. Now, the other reason why I've got a camper shower is because we've got a dog. We've got a border collie. We've tried so many times to have me, my partner in the front, and the dog at my partner's feet. And she just wriggles. She jumps around. She, There's no space at all. And the fur goes everywhere. And so it's just not, it's not good. So I thought what we could do is have a camper shower, have the back, like, with loads of like pillows and stuff like that and you know open up the rear windows she can poke her head through and everything will be fine i want the dog to be safe and she does wriggle around quite a lot so i thought you know what let's ha let's attach her lead in the back somewhere and that got me thinking now if you remember a couple of videos ago where adam gave me this storage box for the back and we put we put two rivet guns in the bed of the truck so we could screw them in by hand and you can, you've seen the video. Whilst the box is not in the back, we can still use those rivet holes. And so I bought one of these, which is like a little eye bolt thing. And basically what I do is I screw this into the bed of the truck using the existing hole and we can hook her lead, her dog lead onto that. So she's sort of secure, right? Anyway, we've tried it a couple of times now and it works a treat. She's able to still move about, she doesn't get tangled up and she can poke her head through, it's awesome. We're able to now go out as a family and go camping with the dog in the back as well. No dramas. Now it is coming to the end of 2023, but I am gonna go camping in the truck next weekend. I'm gonna go and meet Matt. You guys remember Matt from doing the engine swap conversion and various other things. We've got a few things to do on the truck. We're gonna install a horn, and of course we're gonna adjust the exhaust, fingers crossed. And uh, then we're gonna go camping and we're gonna test this baby out and see what it's like camping in the back. So stay tuned for that. I'm obviously gonna put it on, on the YouTube channel. So if you wanna see how that turns out, make sure you subscribe to the channel. So there we go, guys. I've got a camper shell, super excited, and I can't wait to share with you the experiences that I have in the back. That sounds dirty. That, what I mean is I'm going on adventures around the UK, possibly Europe, and I'm so excited to share some experiences that I have camping in the back of my truck. This is like a new chapter. I'm really getting into like, just seeing other people's like camping setups because there's many people in America especially that have like old Toyotas and they have like big camping shells on the back and they look insane just I love this hot it's opened up this whole new sort of like chapter of pickup truck campers it looks it's amazing it's amazing nonetheless that's all I wanted to show you thanks for tuning in like the video if you enjoyed it if you didn't give it one of those and uh, I'll see you tomorrow for a brand new video here on the channel. Turn up the 80s, sounds of the 80s. Rhapsody, the greatest hit the day my mama made me. 99 problems, why I don't look or sound like